An F1 pit stop can be completed in around two seconds and is so finely orchestrated that even if small mistakes are made, then catastrophes can ensue. So what actually happens in these two to three seconds of pit stop pandemonium and how was it so easy for mechanic Francesco Sigorini to accidentally be run over? Let's start with the setup. Formula 1 has the most complex pit stop crew of any motorsport, with so many people servicing one car that you'd need to call five taxis just to get them all home. Waiting for Kimi as he comes into the pits are three mechanics on each wheel, one carrier to remove the old tyre, another to stick the new tyre on, and a third to loosen and tighten the wheel nut with a pneumatic gun. One mechanic at either end of the car to operate the jacks and raise the car, two mechanics standing either side of the car to keep it steady while it's raised up, and there are also potentially two mechanics ready to make front wheel adjustments, one or two spotters keeping an eye on pit lane traffic, and at least one mechanic with a fire extinguisher. So step one is to hit the marks. The entire crew positions themselves, expecting a car to arrive at exact position. If the car overshoots slightly, even by a few centimetres, the crew have to adjust their position or angles, and this costs valuable fractions of a second. Remember, we're looking to get everything done in about two seconds. If you have to waste half a second adjusting your position, that's a 25% time loss. And don't forget, the cars are coming in at not insignificant 80 kilometres an hour. Often mechanics on the front wheels will wear bright markers on their arms for drivers to line up their tyres with. Step 2. Raise the car. Before the car is completely stopped, mechanics are already getting their jacks under the car. The car sits on the lifting pad right at the base of the jack. Now the jacks aren't allowed to have any powered parts, so the mechanics physically lift the car by levering the jack over its wheels. While the rear jack is pretty straightforward, the front jack is slightly more clever swivel jack design, which we'll get into in a second. Two mechanics will move in from the side to hold the car steady while it's up on its jacks, as the tyre changes aren't likely to be operating exactly in sync, so asymmetric forces will be jostling the car around at all times. Step 3. Loosen the wheel. But actually we have to rewind slightly because the mechanics on the wheel gun don't wait for the jack operators to finish before they get to unscrewing. The wheels are being loosened even as the car is being raised up. Now the wheel gun is pneumatic, meaning it's powered by high pressure air. It delivers quick and powerful pulses of torque to tightly screw and unscrew the wheel nuts. Now I'm going to explain torque in more detail in another video, but whenever you hear people discuss torque, it's referring to turning force of a motor. Sometimes that torque is related to turning shafts in an engine, but in this case, obviously it's about the turning force on the wheel nut. The wheel nut and locking mechanisms are some of the most overly developed parts of the whole pit stop procedure, as the wheel replacement process has to be completed incredibly quickly, but incredibly safely. Loose wheels are super dangerous due to their weight and instant fines are handed out to anyone who leaves their pit box with a loose wheel, even if they don't actually exit the pit lane. So how do we screw and unscrew a wheel nut in under two seconds and be confident the whole thing is secure? Well, firstly, the wheel nut only has about three turns of thread. That means the spiral screw part is only three layers deep, so it requires the nut to be turned just three times to be screwed in. Secondly, the wheel nut isn't separate and loose from the wheel itself. It can't pop free of the wheel and roll away. It's actually held loosely inside the rim, which makes things easier and quicker. Though, if the wheel nut gets damaged when trying to attach it, then it cannot be replaced and the entire tyre set is ruined. Thirdly, the axle is nicely tapered, meaning the wheel will slip on quickly and easily. There are also these sprung pins that retract as the wheel is pushed onto the axle, and these pop out to lock the wheel in place on the axles should it come loose. This is a minimum level failsafe device as the wheel is so heavy and under so much force that it can easily wrench itself loose of these pins. The idea here is that if the loose wheel is noticed quickly enough, the car can be stopped before the wheel escapes. Now when removing the wheel, the wheel nut itself holds these pins down, allowing the wheel to come free. So the wheel gun mechanic loosens the wheel nut as the car is being raised. A second mechanic pulls the old tyre free and a third mechanic slots the new tyre onto the axle. The wheel gun mechanic then moves back in to tighten the nut. Step 4. Drop the car. As soon as all the wheels are physically pushed onto the axles, the jack operators will start to drop the car. Both the jacks have quick release handles that mechanics will pull to drop the lifting pads. The pads are sprung and locked into the L position at the start of the stop, but instead of going through the effort of lifting the jack vertical again, the mechanics can simply release the lifting pad while the jack is lowered. The front jack is a swivel jack, which allows the front jack operator to move out of the car's way before the jack is completely lowered. The mechanic can shuffle to the side with the jack handle swivelling to follow him while the lifting pad is still under the car. This means the mechanic can release the jack and pull it out of the way from the side, saving vital tenths of a second. Step 5. Signal to the driver to go. So now we're getting to the tricky bit and the part of the pit stop that can often be a pain in the hass. There used to be someone with a massive lollipop standing in front of the car and if they lifted the lollipop the driver knew it was safe to go. We'll get onto the pros and cons of that in a second. But nowadays the teams use a traffic light system to indicate to the driver when it's safe to leave the pit stop. All drivers do is wait for the green light, they look at nothing else. So what causes the light to go green? Well this is a slightly foggy area as every team has its own system but essentially it works like this with some variation. 
The wheel gun mechanics have a button on their guns that they can hit when they've tightened the wheel nut and are free of the car. The jack operators have a button on their jacks that they can press when the jacks are lowered and free of the car. And if all of these buttons are pressed, the light goes green. Unless. Now there's usually a spotter watching the pit lane. If another car is coming past and releasing the car for the pit box would cause a collision, then the spotter has an override button that keeps or turns the light red. There may also be a spotter watching the pit stop itself and they too can override the traffic light if there's a problem, like a mechanic in the way, a loose bit of bodywork, a fire, etc. So how does it go wrong? With all these systems in place, you might be wondering how Haas managed to send both its cars off without tightened wheels in Australia, and how Kimi ended up driving off before they'd even removed one of his tyres. There's no definite answer, but most of it falls under the auspices of high pressure situation. It's likely way too easy for the wheel gun buttons to be pressed, especially if there's a problem getting the tyre on and off and they're faffing about with the equipment. With 20 odd people crowded around the car, it's very difficult for spotters to override the system in time because they can't actually see everything. And if there's a problem with the tyre and the car sets off without everything in place, by the time the mechanics have raised their arms to signal a problem, the car has already accelerated halfway down the pit lane. In fact, the raise arms are normally just to make sure the driver gets signalled as soon as possible. Now what solutions are there? Lots of ideas are being floated at the moment. They could bring in minimum pit stop times. Even raising the minimum to four or five seconds of stopped time could allow the crew the freedom to get everything right far more often. The lead spotter could press a button when the car comes to a halt and the traffic light simply won't go green until the minimum time is reached. They could introduce a standard mandatory pit light signaling systems. There's lots of ideas available here from a more complicated flick a switch and press a button system on the wheel guns to having the activator buttons further away from the car so the mechanics have to literally move away from the car to set off the lights. Some people have talked about bringing back the lollipop operator. This could work but it puts a lot of pressure on one person to keep an eye on everything that's going on and not accidentally release the driver early. We've seen unsafe releases by lollipop people even when the teams have a breezy 8 to 10 seconds to wait for the refueling rig. Um, they could even fall in line with other sports and reduce the number of people working on the car. Having one wheel mechanic on each corner of the car would increase pit stop times and allow that mechanic to be the final word on whether the car is ready to go. It would also make it easier for spotters to keep an eye on what's going on. I don't think there's any foolproof systems in such a high pressure situation and the sport does seem to have a pretty good system considering how few accidents there actually are. It's clear how seriously the FIA take loose wheels and unsafe releases so there is a huge incentive for teams to get it right and not cut corners. It remains to be seen if any changes will be made, but let me know your thoughts in the comments, particularly if you have any bright ideas.